Hi, I'm Diane with South House Designs and welcome. I am so glad that you're here today because we're gonna be talking about exactly how we made this padded backrest for our banquette that we built. Now, you might be thinking, I don't have a banquette, but this is wall mounted, so it is not attached to the seat at all. You can go through and make the same thing for above a built-in bench that you might have. Say when the kids are little, you added a bench to your kitchen, and now that everybody's a little bit older, you kind of wish, why didn't we put a backrest on this? Um, you can, you can go back and do that. And this is really easy. It is on there so sturdy, I cannot move it at all. And uh, it's because of the French cleat system that we used. So let's get to it. You're gonna love this. This is a good starting point for the backrest. The banquette is built, the backdrop and sides of the dari bar on the left and the mug and plate rack on the right are finished. All the cabinetry is painted. It's time for some softening. Now, to make our backrest, we used quarter inch plywood cut to our finished size. Then we added a frame of one bys along the outside edge. This adds stability and more depth for the French cleat screws and for the fabric staples without adding a whole lot of weight. We glued the one bys in place and then added some brad nails. Ah, oh, the sound of a brad nailer. It's so satisfying and empowering. Next, on the one by on the back, at the height where we want the French cleat, we drew a line, making sure it was perfectly level. One side of each pair of cleats was attached with the include wood screws. Now it's time to add the padding. I knew I wanted an ergonomic backrest with a slight recline and some lumbar support. These are the measurements and design we used. Works perfectly. If anything, I'd be tempted to make the slant even more pronounced to five inches or maybe even six. I ordered my foam from my favorite local upholstery supplier. If you're in the Kansas City area, check out Comfort Foam and Fabric. Check with your local upholstery suppliers and see if they can sell to you or are they strictly wholesale. Otherwise, there's always Amazon. Supplies are linked down in the description. Use spray web glue to glue your foam onto the front of your backer board. Cover the foam with a layer of one inch Dacron batting by again gluing and then wrapping the edges around the back, stapling and then trimming. Now, mark the center of each of the four sides of the back frame, several inches in from the edge. And on the fabric, put a pin at the center of each of the four sides. Now, let's attach the top edge first. Match up those two centers and staple. I used the edge of the cleat as my guide and kept the edge of the fabric aligned with it. Pull the fabric taut to the left a few inches and staple again, then to the right a few inches and staple again, back and forth across the top. Once it's all smooth and even, go back and add more staples between the original ones for a fairly dense row. <clears throat> However this works for you, pull your fabric over the padding on the front and back under to the back side. Now, on the back side at the bottom, do your center alignment again. Pull the fabric tight and staple. Note where the edge of the fabric lands on the board and try to keep that consistent across the bottom of the board. Here's where you get to learn from my mistakes. Only when I had finished the entire bottom edge did I decide it really should be tighter. Check early and even check several times to make sure you have the fabric pulled really nice and tight. Finish the bottom just as you did the top. Now, one side at a time, align the centers and place your first staples. If your padding gets thicker like mine does, you will not be able to use a reference line to make sure everything is pulled the same. Just make sure that the fabric edge is straight even though it is at an angle. When you get close to the corners, trim some of the extra fabric and then make a neat fold and staple. I like to press my projects. Always use a press cloth when using home deck fabrics and always test on a scrap first. Now, it's time to install. We used a laser level and painter's tape to mark a level line at the right height. Then we attached the wall side of the French cleats with the screws provided. And yes, look closely. With the French cleats, at least the ones we use that are in the description, a little bubble comes that you attach. I didn't trust that little thing, but it agreed perfectly with our laser level. Now just watch how easy it is to install. There's a whole series of posts and videos on the other elements of this dining room transformation. Thanks for joining us, and I would so appreciate a thumbs up and a share or a subscribe. 
Have a wonderful day.